Hi everyone. I have not gone on live for a while, so I'm excited to be here. I have someone to talk to today and I hope that you will really enjoy her. Her name is Hannah Olson and she is a motherhood coach, I would say, and she's really reframing our whole idea on what motherhood is and our in the relationship that it is, not that it's a to-do list or a chore or tasks to do. And I've really loved her content. And so I really felt drawn to her. And I thought you guys would also benefit from what she has to say. So, but just as an introduction of who I am, I am Laura Cragen. And I am a coach, a speaker, and a YouTube and podcaster. And I love to talk about mental health. I love to help people, especially women, learn about their sense of self. And to really dig into these actual problems to overcome the anxiety and the depression that they have. And also, after they've done that, being able to have connection with others. So that's what I do. Let's bring her on, and it'll be so fun to talk with her today. And she is just, and she's a mother of five, so you will really understand. She will really have some things to teach you. Let's find her. Hmm. Where is she? Maybe she will come on too. I don't know where she, I can get her. Okay, there she is. Let's add her. Okay, <laughs> for some reason it's just not showing it that I can add you as someone to come on. There, okay. There you are. Yay. Oh, here. Yeah. That was so weird. Yeah, it, it wasn't showing me that you were live. And then I found it. Okay. Yeah, it did say after I was able to see on the bottom, there was something going on. But welcome. I'm glad you're here. And thank let's you. Talk about you. Let's talk about you. I talked about me a little bit and about what I do. But I this is about really helping people understand your message. I And I have a little bit to say, but I really love the message that you have. And I've loved your content. I really thought more women need to know about this because it changes everything when you thank start you so much day. i i agree with you <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's been so life-changing for me so i feel honored to be able to spread the message so yeah so basically i just help women understand that motherhood is a relationship when we talk about motherhood we usually talk about it from kind of a task-based perspective a lot of like the things that moms do and um, I think it can kind of create a weird confusion around what motherhood actually is. Like we tend to think of motherhood more like a job right. than we do a relationship. And so for me, when I um, started having kids and, you know, entered this role or, or whatever you want to call it, you know, a phase of my life where I became a stay-at-home mom, I realized that those were actually two separate things that we're talking about, but we talk about them right. like they're one thing because there is the job aspect of being the primary caregiver and that is work and that is a job, right? Mm -hmm. But that is not motherhood because some women, I mean, there's multiple levels of why that's not motherhood because at some point we're not going to be doing that anymore. Our kids aren't going to mm -hmm. need a primary caregiver and yet, oh, look, we're still going to be their mom, yeah. <laughs> right? So even just in the course of their life, that's not true. And also we have examples of women who work outside of the home and are still fantastic moms. And so I think it's so, so helpful to when we're talking about motherhood to be really clear. Like, are we talking about the job of being a stay-at-home mom and primary caregiver? Or are we talking about motherhood, the, the relationship that we're building and creating with our kids? Okay. Oh, I love that it unifies it seems like all mothers then together that because if you're a mother then you have this underlying denominator that you have a relationship that is the basis of why we chose to do it why we love to do it and what really God is probably hoping you would and then get out of it it's all for us to be happy and have this connection and so that's why I was drawn to it too because I talk a lot about connection and how that's a fundamental need that we have, especially for our mental health. So tell me yes. more on how, and we, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, we, we can get so overwhelmed or just like clouded by all of the task-based things in the job title 
that you honestly forget to even make that connection and right. build the relationship. Uh, like mm -hmm. I, and this is true from my own life, you know, like there were times where I was so in it, <laughs> like I was so You're in, in the, the job, yeah. in like the tasks that I wasn't actually feeding the relationship at all. And I was feeling very emotionally disconnected with my kids, even though I was spending, I mean, during the pandemic is the perfect example. I was with them literally 24 seven, right? Yeah. Weeks at a oh, time, yeah. months at a time. And I was feeling the least emotionally present and connected with them because they just felt like there was always more that I could be doing, right. which was true. Um, but once I started realizing like, okay, but why am I actually doing this? Like, what is the purpose of all of it? Some stuff, it was like, this actually is not serving a purpose. <laughs> so right. I can throw it away. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, oh, I'm doing this for the relationship, but I'm getting so zeroed in on that, that I'm forgetting that that's the purpose. Right. I love that. I love that you, so you really lived it in that way. And using the example of the pandemic is a great example, but just any time that these women, us women are taking so much time to take care of them. So you're speaking a lot to the stay at home moms, but you seem like you do have the ideas of those are working and especially then really giving perspective to those that then later on their kids are older so they don't need as much and if you haven't built that foundation then that's going to take a, um, a hit so how what are some ways that you help women find that connection in building their relationship how do you go about doing that and helping them learn that a lot of it comes down uh, for me like and again i just kind of go off of like my experience and how how just the thoughts that I was having around motherhood was creating a lot of resentment. So it was the way that I was showing up, like, even though I was showing up, right, I was still there. I was always being the person, the way that I was thinking about it was not helping me connect. It, it was actually building a wall and, you know, resentment. It was, it was mm -hmm. leaving me feeling less, more disconnected than right. connected. And honestly, it was so crazy. Once I, literally had this light switch moment that was like, hold on a second. Motherhood is a relationship. The rest of this is part of the job of being a stay at home mom. I could still keep doing the same things I was doing before, but the resentment was just like melted away because it was like, Oh, I don't have to be doing this. Like this is not making me their mom being right. the primary caregiver, being with them all day long, every day, all the time that is not making me their mom. I can mm -hmm. go to Hawaii tomorrow and I will still be their mom. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so it was like all the mom guilt that we're kind of conditioned to have where like anything that you're not doing for your kids is a reason to feel guilty that you're not being a good enough mom. It just all was like, Oh no, like that, that's not a thing anymore because I know mm -hmm. as long as I'm like actually feeling connected, with them, the relationship is going to exist, whether or not I am the one changing their diaper or someone else is, right? Right. I I love that. So it's it's definitely that mindset work. And what it what came to my mind when you said that is you are that same person no matter what, putting that thought in. It's like putting gas in the car. What kind of fuel are you putting in the car? And it really probably like it felt like you weren't going anywhere. Because you were feeling your body and your mind and thought with these thoughts that weren't that were disabling you from really progressing the relationship forward. So that's totally. kind of what came to my mind. It really just it really doesn't get you anywhere when we're thinking that way. And there's so many women that are in that state, and a lot of these kids are. I think I think the best thing to do for if you're thinking of your kids have these different problems and things they need to go therapy it's more for therapy and help for the mom first so how how do you go about that, that with helping un people understand that they need a coach yeah that's that's kind of what i'm working through now so i just coaching is kind of the newest part i of right. my business <laughs> um yeah. i i obviously did a lot of self-coaching but i don't know that i would have called it that at the time so i kind of had the whole mindset shift and I realized all of the benefits that have come from it for me and how 
life changing it was and stuff. And then I realized the world of coaching. I was kind of, like, I'd heard about coaching. I knew what coaching was kind of, right. um, but not really. And then the more I looked into it, the more it was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> like this is life changing stuff because it comes back to like the circumstance, even the action that you're taking can be the same in two scenarios. But when the, the thoughts that you have behind it and the feelings that you have behind it creates a completely different result, even if, you know, right. the motion itself is the same. And uh -huh. so yep. that's where I feel like coaching has just been so powerful in my own life. And now I love being able to coach other people to be able to see that, that it's like, oh, my, my, from the outside, like my life might look the same it, as it did six months ago, but yet it is so different because I am so different and I am thinking about it so different and the way that I'm um, approaching my relationships is so different and just everything is different and it's all right. internal you know like we don't have to depend on other people to do things or not do things in order to feel a certain way it's all just like that it was just so empowering to be like oh, oh yeah I have I have all the power like I have all the control here and mm -hmm. yeah Right. They, so your kids probably didn't change. Your husband probably didn't change. It's your, your house didn't get clean. Like it probably, it was just you. And that's, it, it's, it, I mean, some people can see it has two sides of the coin of like, oh, that's actually a lot of responsibility that I am in charge of all those emotions, but it's also that much more empowering. Like there's that opposition in all things that I talk about, but it's, I mean, that's kind of how life is. Like there's, we're only, half the things in life are going to be happy. Half the things in life are going to be hard and it creates that balance in our life. And so that, what, what have you noticed with your, with your, with your kids? Of course, I'm sure there has by this point been some changes and even probably with your husband. Tell me more about that, how they've been acting once you, um, <laughs> sorry, how they've been acting. Ask that part again. How, how they change since you've changed. Okay. Um, well, I mean, for sure, I just feel like I am so much more in control in like my ability to maintain a level of emotional regulation. Right. Yeah. So like they, they they still have their crazy days. They still have their good days, but like, I'm able to just be like, okay, this isn't about me. Right. I can maintain control of myself. Not that I do a thousand percent of the time, right? Like right. we all have our moments, yeah. but yeah. it's so much easier to like take myself out of the emotional, like, oh, they're doing this to annoy me or just feeling like burnt out or like overwhelmed all the time. I'm able to not have those feelings anymore. And so it's, it, it makes it so much easier to just allow them the space to have their feelings and not feel like it's my job to fix it or change them or whatever to just like give them their space and try to just remember the like I am you know I am a reflection of me they are not a reflection of me like they yeah. they're gonna do the things that they're, they're gonna do and what's most important is how am I gonna show up how am I gonna respond to them and am I going to maintain the safety that I want like the safe space that I want to be for them mm -hmm. um that's kind of goes back to the other thing but like before like, as a stay-at-home mom right that was like my worth not my worth necessarily but like my the metrics that for success that I was using mm -hmm. were like how clean is my house how well behaved are my children how on top of like all of these things am I right like it was all of these task lists that were the metric for success and now it's just was I a safe place for my kids today yeah it's like, who cares if there's dishes in the sink? Who cares if there's laundry? If I was able to maintain my ability to be that safe place for them, that is what I want to measure my success on, right? And again, do I, am I perfect at it all the time? No, but no. it's like, I, that is something I can control. Like the messes are going to happen. And right. if I am, you know, like I only do a good job if my house is pristine 100% of the time, like that's not a helpful thing for me or for my kids I think um so now it's like I'm okay letting stuff go I'm okay whatever but it's like but I really do want to try like whatever I'm doing whatever the state of anything is 
the most important thing for me is, was I that safe place for them when they needed it? I love that. That's, that, that is the core of the relationship piece then that you are actually putting in the time and effort to be there for them when they can't always regulate themselves. You need to be that anchor. Like you said, you're, you're not reactive. You don't, um, you don't put it on them on your worth. You, and it just seems like you're more solid and they're going to pick up on that over time. So I really love that. And this is what a lot of women need, need to hear. And this is all the things I love to talk about with mental health and really helping women find that sense of self because that is first what you have to do is to and the first piece of the first piece of finding a sense of self is understanding you have that power it's right here your hands have it and you get to choose and there are so many ways to help you understand that so i really appreciate you coming on today because these things need to be talked about so Thank you again. So how can people find you and tell them about some more things that you do? Um, yeah, thanks. So I'm at Freckled Hand. That's my handle, Freckled Hand. And I also have a website, freckledhand.com. Um, if you go to the link in my bio, I have like a little freebie that will kind of help you. Because for me, like the first step in helping women kind of unpackage motherhood, the relationship from stay-at-home mom or primary caregiver, the job, is just like, realizing all the things that motherhood isn't mm -hmm. and really like breaking that out from the relationship because right. again you can use the tasks as tools to strengthen the relationship but you don't have to like there's not a single tool that is or a single task that is a requirement for the relationship it's mm -hmm. just all made up in our heads right so I have um, like a little class workbook free thing um, that you can find on my bio that helps you just like really look at like, okay, what, what are all the things I'm thinking of as motherhood, like planning the birthday parties and driving the carpool <laughs> and meal planning and whatever it is. Like, how can I look at all that and be like, oh, that's actually not the relationship that I have with my kids. I can use it. Sure. But it's, it, it's in and of itself is not a relationship. So yep. that's a helpful resource that I have for people. If you're interested. And um, like I said, you can find that on my bio. And then, yeah, just That's check out some of my content and see if it is a helpful reframe for you. Um, also, I am doing one-on-one -on -one coaching if people are interested in that. So you can send me a DM and we can chat more. But That's yeah, I just, I'm just i so passionate about helping women make this mindset shift because it literally changes everything. <laughs> it really does. And you do a good job of really helping us see those pain points in real life in your um in your instagram and in the reels and the things that you do and saying in your stories i just i like seeing what you do so because it's so relatable i mean it's it really helps it see it through a lens of okay i'm in i'm in my my dirties dirty clothes and this is what it's like right now i feel like i'm wallowing in my sorrow as a mom but you give women those those tools to empower them so Thank you. I really appreciate it. And it, as far as me, I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching as well with mental health. And if anyone wants to learn more about that, go to my stuff in the bio to my link in bio. And the one freebie I have is the um, adult friendship guide is what I've been focusing on because we really need that connection. And it's really tricky to manage adult, adult friendships, especially as busy moms. So it's so the, the guide like tips yep. on um, building and maintaining adult friendships. Yes. I go through the, the five W questions of adult friendships. So cool. I think covering all our bases and a talk, I talk also about what to do when it's not going well too. So that's awesome. Yeah, they want to awesome. that. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you again. And let's, yeah. uh, let's have, let's have something else in the future together. Sounds good. Thanks so much right. for having me. Thank Talk you everyone for coming. We'll see you. Bye. Bye.